Hello, Math 7 students. This is Utah Middle School Math Project 4.3D called Percent Proportions. Um, this is kind of a continuation of our odds and probability. We're going to be talking a little bit less about odds and probability um, and more about the percent, but the concept and the process is still going to be the same. To get started, we have this quick pull to review odds and probability from our last lesson. The odds of drawing a face card from a standard deck of cards are 16 to 36. If I keep drawing from the deck until I have four face cards, how many total cards did I draw theoretically? That's just in theory. We're not actually experimenting, so all of this is in theory or just according to the mathematics. Uh, pause the recording. Make sure you give this a try on your own first, and then we'll continue and do it together. All right, now we're back together. We have five, six, seven, eight students in class. So less than half the class who got this correct. So let's talk about it. I did remind you we need to read carefully. Let's just review this word right here. The odds. What does that mean? What am I giving you? Joshua. Yeah, if I'm giving you the odds, I'm giving you information that's presented in a part-to-part -part ratio. So when I continue reading, drawing a face card from a standard deck of cards are 16 to 36. So this is one part. This is the other part. That's not a whole. That's the other part. So again, this is the part where I'm drawing a face card. This is the part where I'm drawing non-face cards. Okay, so keep that in mind. If I keep drawing from the deck until I have four face cards, how many total cards did I draw? Look at what the question is asking. How many total cards? Is using this part-to-part -part information going to get me to the end of the problem. Okay, so t Carter, talk me through it. Okay, so you saw total cards. I'm just going to turn this into a part-to-whole ratio. So part-to-whole ratio, we're adding the parts. 16 plus 36 is equal to what, Carter? 52. So we have 52 total cards. Well, that's, yeah, 52 total cards in the deck. We got that by adding the two parts together. Okay, how does that help me? Go ahead, Carter. Give me one more step. Okay. I'm going to pause you. That's a lot of information and the listeners to the video can't hear any of it. So I have to repeat it all. So we're going to go slower, a lot slower. Uh-huh. But here's what I want to point out of something that he said. What Carter was describing was using this part to part ratio. But we already talked about how the question is asking for the total. So does continuing to use the part to part ratio, is that going to be the easiest way of doing this problem? No. And since you already took the time to find the whole amount, let's change this from a part to part to a part to whole ratio. What is that part to whole ratio going to be? Let's review how we set up these problems before. Before I even did any of those solving, I wrote out these ratios. We have face cards to non-face cards. And that is the ratio of 16 to 36. That's our part to part. But I also have some part to whole ratios that I can write. I can do face cards to the total number of cards. And I can do non face cards because that's the other part to the total number of cards. Before I even try and start solving, just like we practiced last time, set up your different ratios to see which one is going to be the easiest. So we added this together for a reason. 16 plus 36 is 52. That's 52 total cards that I'm going to have in each of these part to holes. How many face cards? 16. How many non face cards? 36. Now I've got my three ratios. 
And I'm just going to pause here and have students rework through this problem. The, several of you did get it correct. So you guys can just have an easy time while the rest of the class discusses. Now that I've set up these three ratios, I have taken the time to follow the things that we did in our last lesson. How does this help? Which ratio is going to be the most useful for answering this question? Talk with your groups now. I'll be pause the recording. The question is asking, if I keep drawing until I have four face cards, that's four face cards, how many total cards did I draw? What sort of ratio is going to be the best to get me to where I need to go in the end? Is it going to be this first one that's a part-to-part -part ratio? No? Is it going to be this one that goes face cards to total and compares that? Yeah, I'm going to say yes. This one is another part-to-whole ratio. Is this one going to work? Maybe with some extra steps. And I'm trying to avoid those extra steps. So eventually, folks, eventually we're going to get to a point where this part, where I write all these out, that's done in my head. So that I just know the one that I want is the one that's face cards to the total amount of cards. And I know that this is the one that I want to create. Eventually, all of this can be done in your head. Right now, I'm making it visual and we're showing our work so that we can build to that thought process. But this is the one I want to use. I'm going to use the total face cards, which is 16, to the grand total amount of cards, which is 52. That's how that standard deck of cards is built. And now... This is another reason why I wanted to pause Carter. He was getting so focused on the solving steps that he forgot about setting up that problem. I want us to practice setting up that problem. So 16 face cards to total of 52 cards. The question is asking if we drew four face cards. So that's four face cards. How many total cards did I draw? We don't know. So that's where we use that variable. C for card, T for total, whatever you want to do there. This is part of the process, and this is one of the things that we're really going to be working hard on today, and that's why we had all those previous lessons, so that we had this practice of setting up these proportion equations. Talk me through the solving steps here. There's lots of ways we can solve this. I've taught you multiple strategies. What strategy do you like the best here? Remember how you guys had a chance to talk with your groups already? Let's see those hands. Sophie, thank you. Yeah, exactly. When we're comparing the face cards to the total and the question is asking face cards to the total, that just makes sense to choose this middle one. But now that that's chosen and we have this proportion equation, what solving steps would you like to take? We want to solve it. There's Again, there's lots of ways that we can solve it. Now that we've gotten to here, how do we solve this? Gideon, what would you choose to do? Great. You worked backwards in the other direction. Good. Yeah. Great. I love that. So Carter did mention that we're, he noticed that they were multiples of four, so he just divided by four. This visual model, now that it's set up, it explains why we can just divide by four. How is that 16 changing to a four? We're dividing by four. So that 52 divided by four is going to be 13. C is equal to 13. Or in theory, we probably drew 13 total cards. And among those 13 total cards were four face cards. All right. Utah Middle School Math Project 4.3D percent proportions. So we have had a lot of experience writing proportions a ratio equal to a ratio, our focus is going to be on turning those proportions into percents. That's what the name of this unit actually is, is percents, so it's about time we finally get to the percents. Percentages involve part to whole relationships. We've dealt with part to parts and part to wholes. This is a part to whole relationship whenever I'm dealing with a percentage, so keep that in mind. If we use a percent in a proportion equation, we write the percent as a fraction out of 100. We talked about this before. Percent means per 
100. So that's why we're writing it as a fraction out of 100 because that's what per cent means. It's out of 100. For example, we would say 72%. That's what that symbol means. But we can think of it as 72 hundredths. 72 per 100. In a way, this could also be said 72% as well. 72 out of 100. In a percent proportion equation, we will always be looking to find one of three possible missing pieces of information. We could be looking to find the percent, we could be looking to find the part, or we could be looking to find the whole amount. Those parts are demonstrated here in this proportion equation. Again, keep in mind what we see here is a ratio equal to a ratio. Here's the nice thing about these particular ratios. Since we are dealing with percents, half of that ratio or half of that equation, one whole ratio is already taken up. It's the percent out of 100, the parts out of 100. That's one half of that equation. Okay? The other part comes from the story. We're talking about parts, face cards out of a whole total deck of cards, or red marbles out of the whole total marbles in the bag. So it just depends on the situation. Let's take a look at the first one, work on that one together to make sense of this. Yes, Joshua. Now that I've passed out the papers to the students, we can continue. A survey reveals that 252 out of 350 students in seventh grade like to read. What percent like to read? I'll help you out with the first one. This is 252 out of 352 students, or 350 students. When I put this together, understanding that I'm trying to create a ratio equal to a ratio, it sounds like I'm giving you here a part of the students. That's a part of the students who like to read. And that's 350 students. Out of the grand total number of seventh graders, Yes, this is a large school, right? 350 seventh grade students. So the total amount of seventh grade students. Oh, oh my goodness. Why am I making these mistakes? I hope you guys just didn't copy. You guys were just copying, weren't you? 252 is the part of the students that like to read. 350 is the total number of students. I apologize for that mistake. Okay. Now, what is going to go on the other side? It says, what percent like to read? We don't know what percent, but we do know the one thing about percents is that they're per 100. Do we know what the actual amount is? No. We can call it a variable. You can call it the P for the percent if you would like. You can go with the classic X. That would be fine too. But this is the proportion equation. Okay. Not too hard, right? Now, one thing that I would like to point out, does it matter if I put the percent on the left side or if it goes on the right side? Now we can switch those. So I kept it in the exact same format up here just to keep it consistent, but I want you to understand it can be written either way. It's no different than x equals 10 and 10 equals x. They mean the same thing. That's the reflexive property. Carter, question or comment? Stretching, okay. Let's not solve this just yet. We'll get there in a second. I want to move on to number two. This time it says 72% of the students in eighth grade like to read, and there are 350 students in eighth grade. It is a very large school. How many students in eighth grade then like to read? I set you up with the first one. I want you to practice. See if you can set up this next one with your groups. We're going to pause recording with your group. See if you can get that set up. Ready, set, go. Okay. I know that I'm going to be setting up a ratio equal to a ratio, and I know that I'm also going to have the labels over here so I know what I'm talking about. So what goes where? Help me out here. Luke, thank you. Okay, read. Likes to read. And what goes on the bottom? If the top part is read, what goes on the bottom? Yeah, the total. Just like our last problem, right? Now let's fill in all of this part. Luke, do you want to continue or do you want to have someone else help you out? Okay, continue. Okay. Yep. Go. 
good. So 72 per cent means 72 per 100. Exactly. So half of that proportion is already set up. Keep going. Good. Because that's the total number of students. That's not referring to the students who like to read. That's the total number. So that's going to go on the bottom with the totals. Okay. Exactly. We know the percent, but we don't know the number. So this is the percent. This is comparing it to the number of students, which we don't know. We can call it S for students. We can call it X if we would like to. And there is our proportion statement. We will solve it in a second. Again, if you would like, you can always reverse that. So if you have X over 350 is equal to 72 out of 100, that's okay. Let's move on to number three. Let's say 72% of the students in sixth grade like to read, and we know that there are 252 students that do like to read, but we don't know how many students are in sixth grade. What are we gonna do with all of that information? Another pause break, get that one done as well. We'll talk about all three and then we'll solve them with your groups, ready, set, go. Once again, I know that this is a ratio equal to a ratio, and just like before when it's a ratio equal to a ratio, I also know that I'm going to have my labels. So it's going to look like that. Help me fill in those blank spots. There are not enough hands. Okay, Cambria. Read in total again. Okay. Perfect. 72% again tells us that it's 72 per 100. So we know half of that proportion. We just need to figure out the other half. Go ahead and finish it up. Good. 252 who actually like to read. So that goes up here with the rest of the information about liking to read. And in the bottom, we don't know how many students are in sixth grade. So we don't know the total. We can again call it S for students, maybe X for our classic variable. And there are our three proportion statements. Fun fact in case you didn't know. We can solve them all and they're all going to represent the same type of situation, right? But here's what I want you to notice is sometimes, I'll wait. Sometimes we're trying to find the percent, the parts out of 100. That's what it's set up here. Sometimes we know the whole amount and we know the percent, we don't know the part. Sometimes we know the percent and we know the part, but it's that grand total that we don't know. So those are all the different places that we could have a variable and the different ways that we can set these up. Let's quickly, with our groups, let's solve these. I'm going to just keep the recording going. You guys are going to go ahead and discuss using your calculators, get these all solved, and help me out when I call for those answers. When I solve this, I have x divided by 100. I undo dividing by 100 by multiplying each side by 100. So I have x is equal to 252 divided by 350 times 100. I'm going to guess that the answer here is 72. Am I right? Okay. You see what's going on now, Loria? Okay. <laughs> Okay, and here x is being divided by 350. I'm going to multiply by 350 each side so I can undo that division. And when I do this, x, or 350 and 350 multiply out. 72 divided by 100, then multiplied by 350. I'm going to guess that this is 252. Isn't it, though? And 252 is being divided by x, so I need to have a different kind of strategy here. And the strategy isn't look back at the other ones. The strategy is re flip it to its reciprocal. We're going to rewrite this to be the total divided by the red. So 100 divided by 72 is equal to x divided by 252. And now I'm going to undo dividing by 252. 
by multiplying by 252. Whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other side. 100 divided by 72, then multiplied by 252, I have x is equal to 350. Okay. Now, the next set of problems are not going to be as easy, where you can't just reuse the information from each problem, but they're similar in format where I'm giving you some pieces of information, you have to still set up your proportion so that it highlights the pieces that we're missing and then solve it. So I'm going to just pause and let you guys work on four, five, and six. We'll go over on the video, but pause and give yourself a chance to work on it first as students work on it in class. Ready, set, go. Okay, let's write these out. We're writing proportion statements, proportion equations, but they have percents in them. So percent proportion equations. You're taking a math test and you get 32 problems correct on the test. Your grade is 80%. How many problems then were on the test? So I'm going to be setting this up with the correct out of the total. That's how percents on tests are calculated, right? How many you get correct out of the total amount. And it says we got 32 correct, but we don't know how many problems were on the test. We don't know the total amount, but we know that our grade was 80%. So that is equal to 80 per 100 or 80 divided by 100. How'd you guys do on setting that up? Good. All right, let's move on to the next one. We'll solve, but let's just move on to the next one. Setting them up is the part that I really want to focus on. Your best friend takes a math test with 40 problems on it. She solves 75% of the problems correctly. How many problems did your friend get correct? So again, looks like we're comparing correct questions to the total number of questions. Your problem or the test had 40 questions on it, so 40. We don't know how many she got correct. I'm going to use C for correct here. But we do know that the number correct divided by 40 is equal to 75 per cent, or 75 out of 100. That's our next one. And last, another friend gets 36 out of 40 problems correct. What per cent did this friend solve correctly? That is going to be, once again, the correct out of the total. We got 36 correct out of 40 here, and it's asking what is the percent. Careful here. That means we don't know the part that goes on top. We don't know the X, but we do know that it is a percent, so we know it's out of 100. Now, let's solve these. Um, and I'm just going to go through this quickly because you should have already completed this together with your groups. This one, we need to flip it to its reciprocal before I can solve. And here's why those other strategies have come in handy. Do you know how a 32 changes to an 80? Does using that old equivalent ratio strategy work as nicely here? It doesn't for me. And so using those other strategies that we've practiced is really going to be helpful here. T divided by 32 is equal to 100 divided by 80. And now, using my solving steps, I can multiply each side by 32. And I'm going to look for hands here because I do not know what this is. T is equal to uh, how many total questions? Gideon, 40 questions. Okay, so T is equal to total of 40 questions. Uh, here, one single solving step, so I don't need to worry about rewrite, rewriting it. I just know that C is divided by 40. We undo that by multiplying each side by 40. And so I have C is equal to 75 out of 100 times 40, Carter? 30. So 30 total correct questions. And... Here, one single solving step, I'm going to undo dividing by 100 by multiplying by 100, balance it, do the same thing over here. 36 out of 40, multiplied then by 100, what does x equal here? Help me out, please. Joshua, 90. So 90%, 90, 90 out of 100. That is an A, an A minus, just barely an A. Okay. 7 through 11, that's going to be homework because I want you to practice the same things that we've practiced in class. So 7 through 11 is your homework. Get that highlighted, get that marked. Are we going straight to answering the questions? 
No, we need to make sure that we're pausing and we're writing our proportion statements. Write your proportion equation. Once you've written your proportion equation like here, then you can solve it. Now you know what your homework is, let's go through some of these other practice problems. In addition to 7 through 11 being homework, I want you to skip ahead to... All right, so you've been assigned 7 through 11 as homework, let's do 12 together. And if we don't also finish 13, then I'm going to make 13 be your homework as well. Elias has 28 marbles, 7 are red and the rest are blue. Calvin has 64 marbles with 16 red and the rest blue. What percent of Elias' marbles are red and what percent of Calvin's are red? Tying this into our last one, we have 7 red out of 28 marbles total. So that's 7 red out of 28 total. The question is asking what percent are red? So percent means it's going to be per 100. I don't know what that variable is going to be. I don't know what the per or what the number is out of 100. So that's what I need to find out. Again, this is nice and easy. 7 divided by 28 is equal to x divided by 100. I undo dividing by 100 by multiplying by 100. 7 divided by 28 then multiplied by 20 or by 100. I have x is equal to Carter 25. Now, let's figure out for Calvin. That was for Elias. Now, let's figure out for Calvin. Calvin has 64 marbles. 16 of them are red. So again, red to the total. That's going to be 16 out of 64. And again, what is the percent? I don't know, but it's per 100. Undo dividing by 100 by multiplying each side by 100. And I end up here with x is equal to, again, 25. So Calvin has 25% red and Elias had 25% red. If they pool their marbles together, they put them all together in one bag instead of two bags, what percentage will be red? What do you think? What percentage will be red? Grant? Yeah, it still is going to be 25%. Without even doing those calculations, it's still going to be 25%. If 25% of one thing and we combine it with 25% of another thing, that still is going to be that 25%. To prove it, we're going to go 16 plus 7 out of 28 plus 64. This is the total red. This is the total total. Again, what is that percent? It is equal to x over 100. x per 100. 16 plus 7 is equal to 23. 28 plus 64. Ooh, this hurts my brain. Have not had my coffee. 92. Yeah? Yes? Yeah? Sound good to you? Okay. And we solve and we end up with, just like we had assumed, it is also going to be 25%. Undo that dividing by 100 by multiplying by 100, and x is equal to 25. Boom. We're going to go ahead and skip C and D, but I do want you to answer question 13. So that's also part of homework. 13 and 7 through 11. It is time to get cleaned up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.